We've torn down our share of VR headsets, but now the Magic Leap is the first mixed reality headset to land on our teardown table. What makes the Magic Leap so magical and leapy? We're gonna tear it down to find out. Unlike the VR headsets we've seen in the past, the Magic Leap is a self-contained unit. The light pack acts as the brains of the unit and is tethered to the Lightwear headset, which contains the cameras, sensors, and speakers. First things first, we crack open the light pack, which packs all the processing power for the Magic Leap. Some tough adhesive holds it together, but some heat and strong prying gets it apart and we're greeted with, well, not much yet. A glued down status LED panel is resting above the tether cable, which is screwed in place. While we were able to get the permanent cord connecting the light pack to the light wear off, it's pretty difficult and probably means a damaged cord would require a full device replacement. Another layer comes out and we finally see the motherboard. Connected by a few cables, the motherboard sits on a heat sink and even has a small fan on the underside. With all the processing power that's packed into the light pack, it makes some sense to see this level of thermal management. Speaking of processing power, let's see what's on that board. Right in the center, we spot the NVIDIA Tegra X2 Parker system on chip that includes the NVIDIA Pascal GPU. We also spy the 8GB of Samsung-made LPDDR4 DRAM, and on the other side of the board, 128GB of Toshiba-made NAND Universal Flash Storage. The lower portion of the light pack is home to the battery, which keeps the Magic Leap running. This is a 36.77 watt hour, 3.83 volt battery, which puts it squarely in the range of some popular tablets like the Surface Go and the iPad 6. With the light pack hollowed out, we get working on the Lightwear headset. The headset has four pads that are clipped in place, and below those are panels secured by some standard Torx screws. There are four panels in total, two of which are home to the speakers. After removing the fit customization pieces, which are held in place by magnets, we turn our attention to the many sensors on the Magic Leap, starting with the mysterious box that hangs off the right side of the headset. This box contains an EM sensor used for position tracking for the totem controller. Magnetic tracking relies on those three copper coils forming three perpendicular magnetic fields. Then the field's intensity in relation to the totem is measured to determine the position and orientation of the totem relative to the headset. Separating the faceplate from the lens assembly requires removing some screws, but then we get our first close-up look at the lenses. Each lens has four infrared LEDs used for eye tracking and a stacked waveguide panel, also known as the photonic light field chip, which is glued to the lens. On the front side of the lenses, we find a grouping of cameras and IR sensors that are visible from the front of the headset. And underneath those, we find a rainbow mystery. This colorful window is actually the optical system for injecting two sets of red, green, and blue image light into the diffractive waveguide, with each of the two sets handling a different focus plane. The bright colors on top are not indicative of specific color channels, but rather result from ambient light reflecting off the diffraction gratings at an angle. So what does this all mean and how does the Magic Leap actually work? So there are two sets of RGB LEDs that generate light. That light is directed onto a liquid crystal on silicon display that reflects the light based on wavelength to form and project an image. Next, a series of lenses focuses that image into a waveguide, which is really just a fancy name for a structure that guides light in a different direction. And then the waveguide directs the image into the user's eye, allowing the user to perceive that image as an object in space. We've come to the end of our magical teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. The Magic Leap scored a three out of 10. And here's why. On the upside, the speakers are easy to remove and replace with just a single screwdriver. The threaded fasteners are all of the standard Torx and Phillips variety. Disassembly is non-destructive on paper anyway, but with this much glue and this many fragile components, you'd better have buckets of patience and a very steady hand. But on the downside, the battery is only replaceable if you're willing to remove the motherboard and tiptoe your way past several intense glue barriers. And finally, there's no upgrade path for any of the optics or processor, which is slightly disappointing considering it's a $2,300 piece of gear. There was so much cool tech inside the Magic Leap, you have to go check out our step-by-step -step teardown. We've linked it in the description below. See you next time.